Have you ever looked at a map of Europe, pointed out all the major cities and wondered why they are where they are. Europe's cities are arguably some of the most well-placed in the world, and this has allowed them throughout history to benefit from those locations. Even today, in modern times, European cities are often seen as models of what cities should be, being only surpassed by some Asian ones in most indicators. I came across an interesting article a while back titled, Five Reasons the World Looks to European Cities. Granted, it was published by the European Central Bank, so there is likely to be some bias in valuing their own, but they point out a series of advantages that European cities have today. These advantages are a result of the policies put into place by their governments at local, national, and EU levels. But many of those policies are possible due to their development and growth throughout history. Arguably, one of the main reasons for that development is the place in which they are located. If you've ever played civilization games, you know how important it is to choose where you settle your city. Most cities in Europe and in the world are placed in strategic locations that will benefit their settlement and growth, but some are luckier than others, and that luck or skill in choosing the right place benefits them in a way that allows for further growth and development. So in this video, I want to take a look at some of Europe's best placed cities, understanding three simple things. First, why they are located where they are. Second, how they were created and developed. And third, how that location has benefited them throughout history up to today. Let's quickly list out the cities we'll be talking about here. First, Istanbul, then Amsterdam, London, Gibraltar, Sevilla, St. Petersburg, quickly mentioning Copenhagen as well, Lisbon, and Paris. Let's start with the ones on the thumbnail. First, Istanbul. Istanbul's strategic location is almost too obvious when we look at a map. It's located between two continents, Europe and Asia, but before Istanbul was Istanbul and was just Constantinople, being much smaller and only located on the European side, its location was already strategic. Its placement allows for the control of the Dardanelle Strait, which connects the Black Sea to the Mediterranean, the only access to open sea for countries like Bulgaria, Romania, Ukraine or Georgia and also being very important for Russia as well as any country that wishes to trade by sea with those nations. The city was founded as Byzantium in the 7th century BC. In 330, the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great made it his imperial capital, eventually renaming it to Constantinople after himself. The city grew in size and influence, eventually becoming a beacon of the Silk Road and one of the most important cities in history. It's interesting that even at a point in history when sea trade wasn't nearly as prevalent and important as it is today, the city was already strategically placed as a gateway from Asia into Europe with high importance in global trade. But we can see on this comparing map that the old Constantinople was already located in a strategic location on the Straits, with the modern Istanbul expanding from it. This is, in my opinion, the best well-placed city in Europe. Then. Amsterdam. Amsterdam was founded on the Amstel River. Most prosperous cities in the world are located next to rivers. It is important that there is a good source of fresh water near a settlement and it also provides good irrigation for potential farming. It originated as a small fishing village in the 12th century named after the local dam built to stop the Amstel River from flooding but grew greatly in importance about 500 years later. In some of these, it's something of a situation of what came first, the chicken or the egg. Did Amsterdam grow immensely because the Netherlands became a strong colonial power, or did it become a strong colonial power partially because Amsterdam was so well placed? During the Dutch Golden Age in the 17th century, Amsterdam became one of the most important ports in the world. The large bay around it offered a natural protection for its port, favoring it in comparison to other coastal regions and leading it to become a center for finance and trade in Europe. Today, Amsterdam is still one of Europe's main cities due to the growth it saw throughout history, mainly in these colonial times in which its location was crucial. Moving west is London. London is located on a river as well, the Thames, a criteria that is checked by almost all cities on this list. The first main settlement here was built by the Romans in the year 100 as the capital of their Britannia province. It was founded on the point of the river where it was narrow enough to bridge and venture out into the sea or continental Europe. After the Romans left the city, it declined, but in about 680, it became a major port again. 
than suffering from Viking raids. It was then refounded by King Alfred, and by the 11th century, London was the largest city in England, and its location was strategic due to two reasons. First, the river itself, allowing it to be an important trade port, and second, the river and marshland allowed for great defensive capability. London was effectively an island, only accessible through the old London Bridge. From the 16th to 17th century, London benefited from decentralized politics and the maritime trade expansion. Like I mentioned at the start, it's not only the location and not only the policies, but a combination of both that make the success of a city. Because London was in a river slash coastal region, it allowed it to benefit from this. Speaking of well-located things, one thing that can be very well-located is your own plot of land in Scotland. This video is sponsored by Established Titles. They're a fantastic service that allows you to simultaneously help save the Scottish woodland and become a lord or lady in title, something you can get on your credit card, plane tickets, and things like that. You can get it for yourself, or it can be a fantastic gift to family or friends. When you purchase their pack, you're granted a small plot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, with a unique plot number so you can see the exact location of your land. In the mail, you will receive a printable certificate to show off the title. I just got mine and it looks really good. Established titles will plant a tree with every order and work with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. It makes an amazing last minute gift. Established titles is actually running a Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code General Knowledge, you get an additional 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com slash general knowledge to get your gifts and support the channel. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. Now back to the video. All the way in southern Spain, but still a part of the United Kingdom, at least for now, Gibraltar. Gibraltar's strategic value is very similar to that of Istanbul, and we can see it as soon as we see a map of its location. It is the gateway between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. Prior to the construction of the Suez Canal, all settlements in the Mediterranean coast, as well as full-on countries like Italy, Greece, all of the Balkans, Turkey, and North African countries had to go through here in order to access the rest of the world by sea. In 1160, an Almohad Sultan ordered that a permanent settlement, including a castle, be built here. It received the name of Medinat al Fath, City of Victory. It changed hands between the Moors and the Spanish a bunch of times, and then in 1713, the Treaty of Utrecht granted it to Great Britain, who, as the United Kingdom, still hold it up to today. A fun fact, in 1779, the French and Spanish attempted to capture it from the British during the American War of Independence, but they were unsuccessful. Its strategic value actually increased with the opening of the Suez Canal, controlled by the British as well, as it lay on the sea route between the UK and the British Empire in the east. Arguably, at this time, British control over the Mediterranean was very significant, and half of it was because of the settlement. Gibraltar isn't a great city today, nor is it vastly prosperous, but its settlement is very well located, and at one time in history, its control meant great rule over the entire Mediterranean. And just nearby is Sevilla. During the colonial age, Sevilla was the main Spanish port. Sevilla is over 2000 years old as a settlement, but its real growth only took place when it was chosen by the Spanish crown to be the headquarters for its transatlantic trade. Most Spanish ships that went to their Southern American or Asian colonies left and came back to Sevilla. This led to a tremendous growth of the settlement. Its choice was somewhat odd because Sevilla isn't a coastal city, rather an interior one, but being located on the Guadalquivir River, which is large enough to sail through, it served the purpose, even though it wasn't founded with this objective. Today, that strategic importance has been surpassed, but Sevilla is still a great city. All the way back up north is St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg was built by Russian Emperor Peter the Great in 1703. In Russia, it's historically and culturally associated with the birth of the Russian Empire and Russia's entry into modern history as a European great power. Part of this was symbolic, but another part was a direct effect. The conquest of this territory and the construction of the city and port created a direct access to the Baltic Sea and the North Atlantic for the Russian Empire. Its location was extremely strategic on the coast of this northern sea to replace the old port of Arkhangelsk which froze during the winter. It was so important that it became the new Russian capital for a while. 
Peter the Great admired and took great influence from the Dutch Empire, especially its naval capabilities, perhaps taking inspiration from Amsterdam when it came to the establishment of the city. Also related to the Baltic North Sea is Copenhagen. Copenhagen is located at a great point to control access between these two bodies of water, in similar style to Istanbul or Gibraltar. And back to the Iberian Peninsula, we have Lisbon. Lisbon is a great example of a location which arguably shaped the country's history. It wasn't a very strategic location to start with, but its location proved to be incredibly useful, similarly to Sevilla at one point, but maintaining it up to modern times. Let's find out how and why. Lisbon was founded at the end of the Tejo River. According to legend, the location was named for the mythical Ulysses, who would have founded a city after sailing there. But the real origin seems to be Olisipu, the Roman settlement. Throughout history, Lisbon changed hands from the Romans to the Visigoths and then the Moors, finally being conquered by Portugal in 1147. But despite being at the mouth of the river, its location wasn't particularly strategic. However, with the development of Portuguese sea navigation and its expansion out into the ocean, leading the growth of European colonialism, Lisbon became an important city in Europe and the world. It was the point of departure and arrival of various ships, and like Amsterdam, it became a key colonial port. Being the westernmost main city and port of Europe, it also gained further importance with the arrival of Europeans in America and the beginning of globalization. And finally for this video, Paris. Paris is arguably the opposite of Lisbon and Sevilla, a city which upon its creation made a lot of strategic sense, having lost some of it throughout time. Also built on a river, but not at its mouth. Paris was built up the river, on purpose, likely in order to defend itself from coastal raids. The first native settlement by the Parisi tribe was conquered by the Romans in 52 BC, which led to the further development of it. Paris's strategic importance was related with its many bridges, which prevented ships from passing and raiding the city. These were established during the successful defense in the Siege of Paris of 885. The early strategic value led to great development of the city and its establishment as the French capital. Today, the location on the river is no longer relevant, we don't have Viking raids anymore, but its central location in France and in Europe remains of value. And that initial strategic location led to a growth and importance that lasts up to today. So, those are some of the most well-placed cities in Europe. Understanding why they were created in these places, how the establishment of the settlements took place, and how they developed throughout time. As well as learning a little about how these locations have benefited them and their development throughout history up to today. Do you agree or disagree with my view on this? And are there any other strategically or well-placed cities that I didn't mention? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.